for our first question. How can efficiencies be gained by integrating generator interconnection processes with transmission planning processes? What are the advantages and disadvantages, including the impacts on consumers, to a closer integration of these processes? Beth, please begin. All right, thank you. I'm happy to start off. And the good thing about going first is I'm not going to try to answer all aspects of the question. We have a great, uh, great panel here that uh, will bring their own perspectives. Um, I'm here this morning on behalf of the R Street Institute, an independent nonprofit which provides research and input promoting free markets and pragmatic solutions to difficult problems. So certainly promoting efficient expansion of the transmission system certainly qualifies as a difficult problem. Um, but I think to the, to the point, I think we need to start by separating transmission network upgrades with, from interconnection facilities. And, you know, Order 2023, improving interconnection, and Order 1920, improving regional planning, were both steps in the right direction, but they alone are unlikely to bring about the type of changes needed in the time frame needed to support the transmission build-out needed. Um, unfortunately, t in too many areas, the interconnection process is being used instead of comprehensive regional planning to effectuate network upgrades, and this leads to inefficient outcomes. These inefficient outcomes mean consumers are harmed, because make no mistake, consumers pay either directly or indirectly the costs of all transmission whether the transmission results from an interconnection process or a regional planning process. Costs and risks assigned to generators will find their way to consumers, either through higher prices or potentially uh, an inability to procure or purchase the power from their desired sources. So in short, continuing to work to improve the interconnection process is good for consumers. I'll also add one, <clears throat> one point on, as we're talking about interconnection, and it's, it's, we're talking about generation interconnection, but I would, I would encourage us to keep in mind the amount of large load that is ex desiring to be interconnected. And it may be that we want to think about how the uh, process to integrate all of that large load um, how that could marry or, or merge up with the process for interconnecting generation. Thank you for including me on this panel. Thank you for hosting this workshop, and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you. Oh, Ash? Oh, Beth, please go ahead. Well, um, thank you for deferring, because I wanted to pick up exactly on where Natasha left off, and it's that um, you know, we all know transmission is the great enabler that allows resources to get to loads. And you have to look, you have to have a view of both sides of that equation. And the, the, but the reality is those big loads aren't going to be able to connect unless there's enough deliverability to them. And so if we want to be in the situation of, of being able to serve these, the, these large expectations of loads, you have to have a system that's going to allow that to uh, allow them to be served in a, in a reliable manner. And so that requires resources on the other side as well. I, I think the, uh, Ed, Natasha raised the point of, or the, the concern about um, uh, 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 investments that aren't fully, uh, end up fully ne being needed. Um, so far, all of the kind of big transmission plan efforts, Aubrey mentioned it in MISO, certainly CRES in Texas, you know, these big planned uh, uh, futures were out, outbuilt. I mean, <laughs> were, were, were fully subscribed or fully utilized faster than anticipated. And, um, and so that, it, it seems to me we have a, we may have a little uh, risk of of um, under, underestimating what the future could be. And I, I like the idea of the, you know, surveying the variety of stakeholders, the variety of perspectives, 
um, to try to develop, all right, here, folks, we're all in this together, demand, supply, how are we going to, what is the future that we think that we're trying to build toward, and what are the scope or the, the, the ranges of what that future might look at, look like um, for us to make those investments? Beth, please. Well, I, I, I'm glad uh, I'm glad Zach uh, mentioned physics um, because it 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 uh, it's an it, we can't get away from it when we're talking about transmission and transmission uh, uh, planning, and because and, and and the comment I just wanted to bring up was that I think when we talk about interregional planning, it depends on which regions we're talking about because of the underlying systems that exist and the physics associated with that. And I, you know, the great example of MISO and SPP and the coordination that they, that the coordinated effort that they've undergone over these years to look at, holy cow, we have this great wind resource right at our boundaries and both of us are affected. We've got to look at this in a coordinated manner. That's a great example of interregional planning and a process to try to accommodate both sides with, with both needs. Other regional borders may not have the same kinds of issues and may have opportunities for different kinds of approaches or different solutions. Um, those may be things like the use of, of uh, of technology, call them GETs or whatever your you know acronym you want to use to try to manage or protect, protect specifically limit flows in particular ways. So I you know I think we just need to be careful that we don't that we recognize at the same time we're trying to be consistent you know having a consistent approach, but the underlying physics of the situation are such that we will see different. Um, needs and opportunities across the country, and that, that's where the challenge comes, is trying to find that balance. One, one of the, maybe there'll be a little discussion here. One of, the, uh, one of the things I've been thinking about in terms of the use of, of GETs, and, and that's a wide range of technologies all kind of lumped together, but, but it seems like that, and you mentioned it a little bit, which I'm, why, why I wanted to pick up on it, is, is that a temporary solution? Is that an, an, an initial an enabler? Or is that, an, you know, do, do we run the risk of that being the, you know, the 30-year solution over the life of the project? And my, my inclination is to use gets in a broad, broad uh, brush definition as that you know, easing in of easy access, here's what I can do right now. Potentially there needs to be some additional work later, but that initial enabling helps with some of these really, you know, the long tortured processes that we find ourselves in. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry to usurp your role here in terms of que quest asking questions, but that's, that's something I've been struggling with and I, I'd certainly welcome Please, some Does anyone want to respond immediately to that? Uh -huh. David, yes. I, Beth, I think that's exactly right, and that's where I was I was trying to go, but I wasn't probably explicit enough. Um, Gets enables this transition to happen. We need the, the scale and the, the size of the macro grid that we need is going to take a lot of time. And these get solutions a lot of times are so easy to implement. I mean, they can do it in weeks on a lot of these a lot of these instances, and like we can enable the generation that's needed to come online so much quicker and with less restrictions and a more reliable way for the grid, it's a no-brainer. I'm sorry, but there has to be something coming in the back end, don't you think? Or, or yeah, The yeah. transmission has to come in in the back end. Yeah. If I could react to that really quickly, <laughs> I'm sorry to jump the queue, but that this, as a consumer, I want to pay the cost. I don't want to pay your risk-adjusted premium on the costs. And, and that has been, I think that's been a helpful uh, way to, or I believe that to be a helpful way to think about this, is there are costs going to be incurred, how, are we, how do we keep them as low as possible, and, and not muck up the, pro and not include so much risk premium on top of that, that, that are, may not necessarily need to be borne. Natasha.